In this video, we're going to use our simple five-step method to interpret atrial fibrillation from an ECG rhythm strip. The first thing I want to do is work out the rate. I'm going to start by counting out 30 large squares from left to right on my rhythm strip. I only want to look at the large squares at this stage, so I hide the small squares to keep things simple. Every large square represents 0.2 of a second. Therefore, 30 large squares represents a six second time period. I now want to count the number of times the heart beats within this 30 square six second interval. As each QRS complex represents a contraction of the ventricles, counting the number of QRS complexes will allow me to calculate the ventricular rate. There are 13 QRS complexes within our 30 squares. If we times six by 10, we of course get 60 seconds otherwise known as a minute. If we times 13 by 10, we get our ventricular rate for the minute. In this ECG, the ventricles are contracting approximately 130 times per minute. While a fast ventricular rate is not by itself diagnostic of atrial fibrillation, it is fairly common, and it can lead to problems if the ventricles beat so rapidly that they don't have time to adequately fill with blood between contractions. We went into more detail about the PASO physiology of AF in our last video, so if you want to know more, you might want to have a look. The next thing we want to know is if the rhythm is regular or not. In a sinus rhythm, we'd expect the heart to beat at regular intervals. However, in AF, the disorganised flow of electricity through the atrial chambers leads to the irregular activation of the ventricular chambers. Irregularly spaced QRS complexes are therefore one of the diagnostic characteristics of AF. The QRS complexes in this ECG are clearly irregularly spaced, making it possible that this ECG represents a heart in atrial fibrillation. Step 3 is to calculate the PR interval. The PR interval represents a pause that occurs between the atrial and ventricular contractions. It is measured from the start of the P wave to the start of the QS complex. However, in this ECG, there are no clearly defined P waves. Instead, we have a lot of small, irregularly sized waves. The lack of clearly defined P waves makes it impossible to calculate the PO interval. Next, we want to check that there is a P wave for every QS complex and a QS complex for every P wave. As we've already discovered, on this ECG, there are no P waves. Instead, we have what is known as a fibrillation wave. These small, irregularly spaced bumps represent the rapid and irregular electrical activity we see in the atrium during AF. A fibrillation wave is another of the diagnostic features of AF. The final step is to look at the QRS complex. During healthy conduction, we would expect the QRS complex to be narrow, by which we mean three small squares or less in width. As we can see, in this ECG, the width of the QRS complex is less than three squares. We would typically expect the QRS complex to be narrow in AF, as we would expect the flow of electrical conduction to follow the normal pathways through the ventricles. In summary, we know this ECG represents AF, as it shows irregularly spaced QRS complexes representing irregular ventricle contractions and because there were fibrillation waves rather than distinct P waves representing the rapid and irregular conduction of the atria. Congratulations, you can now identify AF on an ECG. If you found this video helpful, you might also want to have a look at some of the other videos on ECGs and the cardiovascular system on this channel. Details are in the description below.